started this thinking about um, the essential oils and I had quite a few clients ask me about them and also there ha was a lot of fear about utilizing them. And so uh, Scotty's going to talk a lot about, you know, that the EI didn't even know that they had a team of veterinarians and I'm like so excited about that. <laughs> that uh, so you'll get some really good information also they have information that they can send to you uh, research that's done I love the fact that we're we're circling back to more natural last night I had a very unique experience and I, I, I love it when spirit shows me that yes do this yes yes um, I'm watching a commercial and all of a sudden it says connect to nature and they start talking about the essential oils <laughs> and they're even using utilizing that term and they were naming off certain ones and I just sat there kind of stunned for a little bit and I noticed a lot of the other companies are making the connection between an essential oil that is in their product be it a room spray or um, some cleaning product. So I look at uh, evidence from more of a personal of really uh, uh, investigating and questioning and then looking and going back and utilizing our mind. I love the fact that uh, Scotty and uh, Dutera has really looked at it from more of a scientific point of view. I don't. And so I'm grateful for that. Scott, do you want to talk about the fears and about how you utilize them and, and to eliminate some of that? Sure. Um, oftentimes, we really care for our pets because, you know, they're an integral part of our lives. They're not just pets, they're family. And we become very in tune with how they're feeling um, in terms of their stress, their anxieties. We can recognize immediately when our pet is not feeling well, when our, our fur baby is not doing well at all. So what we'd like to do is to find something natural to take care of that stress or anxiety. I know there are a lot of veterinarians out there right now prescribing, um, you know, synthetic um, yeah. medications for the animals. And Correct me if I'm wrong, Samantha, but what does that do to their thinking? Well, number one, I'm, uh, and this is one of the reasons I decided to start looking into more alternative ways and why the essential oils started popping up more and more. And that was, I, in the last couple of years, I've had more animals that are aggressive and more that are in some form of fear. Part of it has to do with our thinking. The other part of it is there are too many veterinarians that are prescribing Prozac or Xanax as a way of dealing with behavioral problems. Now, I wanted to find something that was a little more powerful than some of these uh, Bach flowers that I was using for an mm -hmm. uh, animal that was in an experience that you can't... Um, desensitize them meaning I worked with a dog that was left during a hur hurricane and also one that was left in its house when there was a flood oops she's frozen for the moment yeah she's frozen for a moment um, and as her internet gets back on maybe um, it would be a good time for everyone on the call to introduce themselves and where you are and your pet. So let me hold on a second. I'm going to call her on the phone and just get her back. without adding a oh. craziness to a craziness to their mind because they like to be grounded. And when you give them a psycho a psychological drug that they can't say this is making me crazy um it's devastating because it makes them more crazy yes this is the sure a question 
uh, let me finish my thought real quick. Okay. Um, this is the reason why um, we have come to work with veterinarians that really want the very best for your pets. And what they've done at doTERRA, and I'm gonna speak of doTERRA because that's where Please. I get all of my oils. They've actually put together a, a, an advisory board of veterinarians and to help support all of the people who have animals and want to use a more natural way of taking care of their animals. So thank you for letting me chime in on that, Samantha. Yeah, that's really important because uh, that takes a little bit of that concern. Uh, number one, how, you know, how safe is it? But for me, when you look at, well, how safe is it? Look at how many years we've used different room sprays that have some uh, uh, oil in it or some scent in it and that the animals have been smelling from detergents to shampoos to carpet cleaners to now they have what spray for couches and and uh, bedding. <laughs> so, uh, so when you're conscient, consciously using something that you know is beneficial, health-wise and mind-wise, uh, and that's where I, you know, my whole business is about the emotional well-being, aside from teaching animal communication. So, um, Sherry, I know you had your hand up, or maybe you were just stretching. <laughs> well, I was, I was actually, I was closing my window, but I do oh. have, I do have a question <laughs> about what you were talking about. So you were talking about uh, medication and how, um, you know, it's not always great for, for vets to, sometimes vets maybe over prescribe medication for um, animal anxiety and cases like that. Do you think that, um, there's a way to help the animals only with these therapies, like the essential oils and um, other therapies, as opposed to ever yeah. having to give prescription medication? Depends on what the prescription medication. I'm totally uh, uh, against Xanax and Prozac okay. because it is mind altering in a way that uh, a normal person could say, this is making me crazy. I'm seeing things uh, and my whole anxiety in my body is up. So I will, I'm speaking out at 77, you know, I feel gutsy enough to say, no, this is wrong. <laughs> and wh when I'm working with animals and let's say we have a, I'm gonna talk about just normal fears for a little bit, okay? Fear and terror. Normally, uh, natural fears, let's say the dog got its tail caught in the door, either in a car or in a house, okay? So it gets goes to the door and it's too freaked out about going out. And so once I find out, oh, it's because of the tail, then I'll give him a vision of holding, tucking its tail against his tummy. And then to help the body, then we'll add to... Um, Rock Rose is one for sound sensitive, terror, frozen in fear. These are Bach flowers. And then Mimulus is for known fear and uh, Aspen for that spooky kind of fear. Always, I always add Star of Bethlehem because that deals with any kind of physical or emotional trauma. Then I have people use either lavender or doTERRA has a uh, serenity. And I have them make a room spray with this combination. The reason being the old factory has, gets into this emotional system faster. It's like maybe you'll smell some bread and it immediately takes you back to when your mom was cooking, making bread. Uh, it immediately takes us back to something very pleasant. It brings up something or it can bring up something kind of scary. Um, I like the fact that it, it, right now we're in a scary time and people are fearful, they're angry, and there's a lot of emotions that's up planetary. The animals feel it, it adds to their fear. So that's why I want an, uh, a, a, a room spray. Duterra has a, a bottle that uh, I love. <laughs> and I am open about this spray bottle because the mist is so fine and the animals are not frightened of it and they can take it in very easily 
So um, yes, there are ways of working with aggression. There's ways of working with fears. There's a ways of working with uh, uh, the emotions in a more positive manner, aside from communication, yes. So since we're all here, it would be really wonderful if we could do introductions, maybe say yeah. your name, where you're from, what kind of pet you have, and turn your video on. And then we'll talk about the agenda, what Samantha mm -hmm. would love to share with you. And then, then you all can ask questions and right. ask questions to Samantha and to Scotty. How does that sound to everybody? Okay, okay. great. So then one by one, go ahead and mute yourself turn your video on and just introduce yourself and tell us about your pet. Go ahead. Hi, I'll start. My name is Luz and this is Yoti. Can you speak up a little bit louder, honey? Um, is that possible? See if I can raise my, is that better? Yes. Okay, this is Yoti and my name is Luz and I'm really happy to be here. Thank you, Samantha. Mm -hmm. Do you have any problems oh, with baby? Um, sometimes she, um, like yesterday, she was throwing up a little bit. Um, and she has a hard time deciding to eat. And she has to be it's... really hungry before she actually eats her food. Okay, so her stomach is, uh, she's either got some kind of fear or she's got something. Uh, has this been a long-term thing or? Uh, it's been going on for a while, yes. Uh, do you give her a good quality probiotic? I do, and I think her food is pretty good too. Um, and one of the things that comes flying through is give her very, very small quantity, very small. Don't ever give her a big dish of stuff. Right. A very, very small uh, quantity at a time to allow her to see if she's going to want to be able, because she's doing that anyway, and you're kind of getting rid of too much food. <laughs> <laughs> Frustrating for you. <laughs> How many times a day should I be feeding her? She's uh, 14 months. She's 14 months. So she's still really a baby. <laughs> oh, so. Three times a day, but she's not taking three anymore. Yeah, I would probably try to give her a little bit more often, very small. And it, I, I, I can tell you one thing I, it has something to do with trust. So. Um, I'm not sure what happened to her. I'd have to, you know, get really quiet and let myself be her to find out. But, um, you know, yes, yeah, sweetheart, I am talking to you. Uh, Samantha, for, Samantha, for sake of time, we have sort of a limited amount okay. for everyone to introduce themselves. In the, okay. And we'll do the readings <laughs> maybe at the end. I'm sorry. <laughs> wants to share with you, Samantha uh, wants to share with you a couple stories about exactly what happened to her pet right now, pets who are dying, how to yeah. treat them. And she needs to give you solutions right now. So we'll do that. We'll do the readouts at the end, Sam. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> who, who's next to introduce yourself? My heart just starts. <laughs> I can go. My name is Pamela Haddad and I've known Samantha for a long, long, long time, but we had a big gap in when we were seeing each other. And I recently, um, brought one of my cats to you. I have three cats, Coco, Sophie, and Cooper. Yeah. And Coco is still spraying, but he's very, very well aware of that he's not supposed to do it. And we're communicating about it. And I'm doing what you're saying, Samantha. I'm showing him to go outside. <laughs> you have to add your emotions to that big yes. time. Yes. How much you love it when he sprays and takes care of the yard. Okay. And then really utilizing the side of his mouth as a scent for inside the the stroking yes yes I actually never thought of it as exactly the side of the mouth thank you i'm gonna yeah. do that and now i also have um diesel my dog my my senior dog and coco and diesel are very bonded after our visit with you actually that really bonded mm -hmm. them in a whole new way so thank you you're welcome yeah who else? hi hi <laughs> um uh, you've worked with all my dogs over many, many, many years and so many years. And you recently worked with my Bentley, uh, who yeah. was a little bit nuts. 
<laughs> and so he's good now, except the only problem is when we get in the car to go to dog park, mm-hmm. he gets into anxiety. I mean, he knows we're just going to go to the park. It's five minutes away. But as soon as he gets in the car, and I can't figure what the anxiety is, if it's the sound or something happened to him in the car or what? what? Robbie, hi. It's good to see you. Um, you know, what comes through, uh, I was talking to Scotty a little bit earlier about, uh, the, a diffuser regarding serenity, because my, I've noticed the cats have changed. I would just start utilizing a diffuser with serenity in it. And in the car, always show going to and coming home. The coming home is really important, almost more important than going to the park. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I always tell them home. We're coming back home. Home. To yeah. The, to the food. Yeah. See, you're walking in the door. See yourself walking in the door, and uh, that you know, that that calming quality is going to ease the gut and that body. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Love you. <laughs> Love you too. Uh, Charlton Kimlin here. I'm from the north. Part of Sweden. Yes. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm uh, very well, and uh, I have been working according to uh, to your methods since. Well, it it must be twenty five years now. Yes. yes, I used to teach there for many many years. I loved, yes. uh, just loved it. Good. Good. Keep it up. It's really important. Yes, yep. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to keep my communication short so we can get through to everybody. everybody. Um, hi, I'm Sherry and I'm from Winona, Minnesota. And um, this is my bird Tiki. And <laughs> I have five birds and a guinea pig and a dog. And then I have a lot of outdoor animals that I love to be around all the time. Um, But he is my bird that I'm the most concerned about. Um, He's very, very angry. He's been pretty angry and pretty aggressive since I got him about seven years ago. And I feel like he's just become almost more and more angry over time. And I have a lot of scars from him and I, I try to treat him as nice and, you know, as great as I, as I can, but he still, it still seems like no matter what I do, he's very, just very angry. And I'm hoping that maybe some essential oil therapy could help him or, um, I just really want to help him. And remind, <laughs> remind me after we say hi to everybody, I'll have Scotty give you an idea of what would re- be helpful from that perspective. And then I'll give you an inner technique to do at night that will help him. Okay. Help the emotion on another level that you'll see happen. So I feel like there are two things have to happen on that. All right. Thank you. Okay. So next. And just okay. so it's Ellen's turn, go ahead. Hi, um, it's it's Renee Newell and I'm here with my mom, Ellen. And between us, we have eight cats and um, I'm meeting um, uh, uh, for the first time, we're now learning about your work and have, uh, have mm-hmm. I have personal issues with a couple of cats, but I'll, I'll try to do it another time. One kitty this- has a kidney issue and another two kitties are fighting, so. <laughs> The fighting we can work with the kidney issues. I'm not uh, kidney issues. I'm not sure what you're doing with the vet, and uh, you know, we Scotty may be able to give you something that will help support that. Um, right. But from I'm an emotional patient, I can give you. So remind us towards the next part, so I can say hi to everybody. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And plus, you might Is use any- a diffuser. Uh, with the lavender, like I, you know, Wonderful. it does. Thank so you. that may help both of them. And I'll give you an idea what other things you can do. Thank you. 
Does anybody who doesn't have their video turned on want to introduce themselves? Okay, so then now what we're going to, oh, go ahead, Leslie. Hi, um, my name is Leslie Sherman. I've known Samantha for a very long time. And um, I'm on this um, presentation because I would like to really learn more about essential oils and how to use them with um, specifically cats. I've been working with special need cats for a while now, long time. And um, the lady who just talked about kidney issues, I have a very wonderful protocol for kidney issues with kidney cats and have had amazing results with it. Cats that have lived six to eight years longer than anybody thought they would. So um, I'd be happy to help you if um, anybody wants to give this lady my contact information. I'd be happy to help you with that. So Leslie, I've, I've known Leslie a really long time. So take her advice. <laughs> Thank you, Samantha. You're welcome. Thank you. And then also, Leslie, can you put your con Leslie? Could you put your contact information in the chat box for everybody? Sure, I'll do that. I'll give you my um, my I'll give you my email address. I'll put it in there. That she used to do she used to do this incredible lighting with crystals uh, hanging, and then uh, lights on it and then the wall would just show these incredible patterns of art that was moving beautiful art I just she used to inspire me to no end <laughs> well, that's really sweet of you to remember I'm actually from the, I used to do those as installations and now I'm creating a prototype of a product mm -hmm. that will create that in anybody's home who wants to Make it's it really easy. stunning, uplifting. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's mood altering, especially for times like this. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Great. Diana put her introduction in the chat. She says she has four dogs and three chickens. Luz, did you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, please. I, I already did with, with Yoti. I okay, to... great. Oh, okay. right, right. I'm sorry. Okay, so now what we'll do with our time is if Samantha, you can talk to Sherry about the lovebird for her emotional issue, and Scotty will talk about the essential oils for the lovebird. Then yeah. Samantha, and I'll, I'll remind you, you can talk to Renee about the cats, the emotional issue. Scotty can talk about the kidney issue. Then we'll move into how Samantha has used essential oils for her pets because she talks to them and they tell her things about it. So we'll go into those issues, what's safe, what's not. And then we'll open it back up. Does that sound all right? Okay, go mm -hmm. ahead. Um, now it's, it's, Samantha, you're gonna to talk to Sherry about her love bird. Hi, Sherry, I uh, mentioned that I felt there needed to be an interconnection and then Scotty could talk about the outer. And, and Bach flower wise for rage, you're gonna use holly, beech. For beech deals with intolerance. Holly is jealousy, hate kill. <laughs> Okay, and then uh, I always like to put Star of Bethlehem with that because underneath it is some kind of emotional or physical trauma. Then Scotty can give you something else that'll add to that. Um, okay, so the inner work, I love inner work. This is uh, from a more spiritual point of view, heart to heart. So I want you to do, because I can tell that the bird is very angry regarding uh, being taken. I don't think that people were going to, um, I don't think this bird was supposed to go to somebody else, uh, uh, is what I think. So we're going to reconnect you with this being. So I want you, when you go to bed, I want you to pull the covers up and I want you to let your body, your body feel safe. People don't feel safe in their body. And we use the word, but we we don't feel it in our physical body. And so if you need to lay on your side like I do, I have to pull my knees up and then I feel safe. I feel so safe inside my body. Get that sensation in your body every night. Then once you feel that ah, kind of sensation when we were into bed, then I want you to think of your bird as this baby, little teeny baby, newborn. And I want you to put your hand on your heart 
and that little baby's in underneath your palm of your hand. And then I want you to emanate that feeling of safety and how much you love this being. And just lay there. And then, just before going to sleep, this is really important. I want you to fantasize as if it's past tense. That bird loving you, being on your shoulder, doing all the things that you want that being to do. Our subconscious is extremely powerful. We do not use it as a tool. Being able to fantasize information as if it's past tense is powerful for the animal, be it a bird, a dog, a, ho a, a horse, doesn't matter, because it gives them clarity. We, for us, pretending is a way to be able to move into that fully without thinking, oh, you I'm sorry about her internet connection. We can get that fixed for next time. Um, she's just going to start talking. It'll pop back up. But when she does, Sherry, do you want to ask her questions about that technique so you get it? Scotty, are you? Mm -hmm. And the Bach flower for the bird, you can either make it into a room spray uh, and you can e email me direct and I can help you with that. Um, I'm not sure how Scotty, if he'll add that to that or some other method. So I, okay, I'm so looking very, forward. Very, very soon, Samantha will be selling Bach flower essence on her website. Right now, it's not set up. Sherry, do you have questions about the technique Samantha just described? I, I think that that sounds like something I can definitely do. You can see how how angry he is right now. Um, I guess I, I have a question about, you said that it seemed like he wasn't supposed to leave where he was. And I yeah. did get him from a family and I think he might've been attached to a young girl, mm -hmm. but the yeah. family was getting rid of him and I wanted him to have a good, good home. <laughs> That's um, why I want you to do that emotional connecting. Also provide more uh, wood so that he can bite then just terrorize stuff up and get it out of its physical body. But the minute he starts to feel that love and that safety with you that, you know, get move the anger out, um, then he's going to be a really, you know, he will make the change. He will. <laughs> okay. So you think he can get to the point where he is happy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and now maybe Scotty, what can she do with essential oils on the outside to calm the bird down yeah. and to heal? I think um, there's a, a twofold process going on here also. With what Vicky's saying is that, Sherry, you also have to, I guess, uh, create an, uh, a situation for your own peace of mind yeah. You're not projecting on your animal, or that you're not projecting on your, your your bird first, so that he's getting nothing but good vibes from you. So you can actually diffuse uh, in your own home uh, either the lavender or serenity. Um, that would be fine, uh, but don't use more than one or two drops within a water-based diffuser. Right. And the reason I say that is because this is a pocket pet. They're small, they're tiny, they don't need a whole lot. Um, but as for you, your sake, you'll get enough benefit at night to help you sleep. And as you go to sleep, you're going to have um, those great thoughts that, that uh, Samantha wants you to have. Secondly, because they're so small, what you can do is use a little bit of lavender, like one drop in uh, a carrier oil, like uh, fractionated coconut oil. And I mean, one drop, maybe three tablespoons of the carrier oil. And what you're going to do is just dip your finger in it and just put a little on his perch, if he has a perch at home. 
and that way he will actually absorb it through his feet when he's standing on his perch. That's and, excellent. and that would be enough and it will help to calm him down. The last thing I want you to take a look at around your home is look for things that are creating an, a toxic environment. And what I mean by that are chemicals, cleaning solutions, that kind of thing. Make sure that's not in your home because any kind of toxicity is going to be absorbed by the animals also. And that tends to throw off their balance, you know, their, their entire body balance. Okay. I think the last question I have is um, just that with birds, I've had them for, for many years now and I've learned that um, certain things that are sprayed into the air can actually harm them. And with, because they have such a sensitive respiratory system, but with the essential oils, this would be safe for him. He didn't mention to put it in the uh, uh, spray. He mentioned to put it on the perch or what was the other the, a diffuser. Uh, and I don't think you'd have the diffuser of that close to him. Okay. So, cause I have 12 birds. <laughs> so I have doves and, and I've had a big macaw. And mm -hmm. so I know what you're talking about. And that's why he said only one drop. Um, you know, we, we animals, birds, as well as animals, their sensory system is highly attuned and, uh, and they'll, that's, you know, so being aware of that and talking about it is really, really important. Scotty, I'd like you to talk a little bit about where uh, to get the uh, fractionated coconut oil and why uh, you're using that. Um, that way, more people understand, including myself. <laughs> the coconut oil is a you know a carrier oil basically, and the reason yes, why actually the coconut oil that I get actually get from DoTerra is the reason they've taken mm -hmm. all the fat out of the oil, so it won't turn rancid over time. That's number one. Ah, number two, you live in okay. a cold environment, it's going to turn hard with regular coconut oil, but with no fat in it. It just stays liquid. And then there's, of course, no scent at all in, in the fractionated coconut oil. That's why I use it. So it won't turn rancid and, you know, it's a really great carrier oil. That's the main thing. And it's relatively inexpensive. So um, I, I, would, Plus, I, just, I love the way something that, you know, from Costco or something that just wouldn't work. I love the fact that you made a mention of putting it on the perch, one drop with a fractionated oil and on the perch because it go, goes through the pot feet. Um, and so many animals, uh, be it a bird or no, you know, it supports the immune system, especially when there's a lot of rage or anger of some sort or fear. And so that supports the immune system as well. And I used to put the uh, different uh, uh, essential oils in the paws of my kitties and dogs in order to support their immune system as well as help the personality. So I'm really glad that you talked about why that fractionated uh, co coconut oil and how to do that. Many people will benefit from that. Okay, and we had, what was the next one? Um, but uh, Scotty, that, were you going to talk about the dilution ratios for animals? Yeah. Um, so. Scott. Um, when, when, you, when we're talking about pocket, you know, animals really, really use it fine. I mean, I've talked to one vet and she said, you know those bottles that um, the essential oil comes in? When it's empty you know, when you've used the last drop out of it, then you can fill it with water or a fractionated coconut oil and whatever is left that in the bottle, that's probably closer to the correct dilution for those pocket animals. You know, so it's the bottle, it still has a smear of oil in the inside of it, just fill it with fractionated coconut oil and use that for the smaller animals. If you're using it for dogs, uh, the small dogs, um, the lap dogs, those kinds of things, one or two drops in 10 mLs of fractionated coconut oil is the dilution. If you're using for a medium dog, 
three to five drops in 10 ml. And if you're using for a large dog, uh, uh, three to seven drops in 10 ml. That's the dilution for those animals. And same goes for cats. And just one last thing, we have a lot of cat lovers here and that's great, I am one too. But please do not use Melaleuca in their presence. Melaleuca is a tree tree oil that cats do not handle well at all. I mean, there are some vets that will prescribe it, but um, they would prescribe it in such small quantities and only for specific reasons. Um, the reason why you don't want to use Melaleuca is cats do not, are missing an enzyme that they could use in their liver to process that particular oil. They don't have it, so don't use it. They're just there are other there are other alternatives to melaleuca that are much better, and will work equally effectively with your cats. Okay. So let's move on to Renee really quickly, and then Samantha. It would be wonderful you could start talking about how you were using the oils with your animals. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Samantha. Um, both my mom and I have cats at home where one cat chases another cat. And in my household, it's little girl that is chased by mama. And in my mother's house, it is um, Muchi that is chased by a big furry creature named Zimba. Okay. So there are two different households and two different sets of cats, right? That's correct. I have five and mom has three. Okay. Uh, well, first off, that uh, technique I was telling about regarding the bird, uh, you know, night, well, I call it inner work before you go to sleep to feel safe because obviously, you know, not only is there some kind of anger between the two of them um, and fear. So, <clears throat> Really get in and feel your body feel safe when you're going to go to sleep and then pretend that both of them together are baby kittens and put them over your heart and then let them feel safe. The reason I like people to do it before they're going to sleep is the animals quiet and then the people are quiet and your mind, they'll pick up your thoughts and those feelings. And so it's very, very powerful inner work. We don't utilize it as powerful tools. So I want you to do that and then pretend when you start to go to sleep, then pretend that they're looking at one another and walking away. Look at one another and walk away. We don't give our animals alternative to the behavior. What we do is we reinforce what they are doing. Meaning you're thinking, oh God, I wish you wouldn't chase him. Oh, you know, how do I get them to stop chasing her? You know, that kind of stuff. That gives them permission because if we see it in our mind, we're dealing with it every day. What do you do to give them an alternative? I would, uh, this is what I do. I say to my kitties, give them space, give them space. Just look at Koa and walk away. So Use a phrase that conjures up a vision in your mind. We are word-oriented. It's too difficult for you to try to fantasize the information. It slows thought down. So what I'd like you to do is write a short little phrase. I love it when you look at so-and-so and walk by. Or see them laying in different places in the same room and say, I love it when you guys just lay and watch one another. That phrase conjures up the vision. That's an alternative. Okay. Make sure their dishes are farther apart though. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Big time. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wonderful. So, Great. and then, uh, of Bach flower wise, I would suggest, um, holly and um, mimulus mimulus deals with known fear and holly is jealousy envy hate kill and and then am I, am I giving them to both of the cats are we giving yes one that's put it in either the water or make a room spray with it okay. um and then scotty what would you suggest for that mm. <laughs> 
Well, actually, um, anything that will calm an animal down is serenity. Just fine, and serenity or lavender. You know, yeah. I've, I've watched. The reason why I, I got so much into this was I watched a YouTube video once of Cesar, um, you know, working with his animals, and he was trying to calm a dog down who had a terrible fear, uh, or was just anxious all the time of a squeezy toy. And every time you squeeze it, it made a noise and that dog would just panic. So I noticed him calming the animal, animal down by just petting his fur. But yes. next to his feet, he had a bottle of lavender. <laughs> 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 so he had lavender, you know, blowing around the dog. And as he was, you know, calming the pet down, they got more relaxed. So I thought that was really interesting. Cesar Milan cheats. <laughs> I, I think in our case that both of the cats that are chasing the other cats are bullies. Ah, but Zimba is a big monster. I mean, he's 20 pounds. He's a big, huge guy. And my other kitty, Mama, is a little one, but she's a tough, feisty little, you know, feral from outside. And um, I don't know whether a they're... Surviving. Yeah. So it has to do with survival. Uh, that's why it's real important to start talking about what you want them to do, how you want them to be, and bringing that co emotional connection again and what the visuals, because animals are visually oriented, sensory oriented, and emotionally oriented. We use our words. We need to add those. That's why I say at night, they can pick up what you're feeling, that safety in the body. If you feel safe, you're not going to go after another animal. Okay. regardless if you are the one that's chasing or the one that's receiving it, the terror, both underneath it is something that says, I got to keep you away or keep you at a distance. All right. So that uh, when Scotty was talking about utilizing lavender in the diffuser, I noticed that Casey and April are sleeping close by. I mean, uh, this close to one another that that wasn't happening before <laughs> so you know yeah i'm utilizing right. different so, ones to see how they how the animals are affected and then i'm asking questions regarding that they're very that's a very calming almost makes them feel like they can trust that's the sensation is like it's like when april because uh, Casey chased April for three months outside. Now, I didn't even know about this cat. I think I saw her in April. That's why I called her April. It was September when she finally literally wanted to crawl up me and said, I don't have a home. You're taking me inside. <laughs> and so Casey made sure all cats stayed away from this house. Very, very aggressive guy outside. And so for them to sleep together now on the bed is huge, huge. And for a long time, I just would say, uh, Casey, just watch her walk by, watch her walk by. And that, and I would see them in my mind doing that. And then, and then I had to work with her because she knew, okay, this guy, she was a little frightened and then she got <clears throat> gutsy. And uh, partially wants to play and partially wants to swat him. <laughs> okay. I've, so tried, I've tried the Jackson Galaxy essences. And mm -hmm. I did use lavender mm -hmm. in a diffuser when I first got them in. And then um, there's another pheromone that you plug in. I've tried that as well. And um, maybe it's all me that needs to be fixed, not them. <laughs> Uh, okay, so well, let's, um, Samantha, yeah. for sake of time, since we have okay. to move on. Okay. So let's just, so Samantha's going to talk about two instances with Sparkle and with Panda. Yeah. But before she does that, Scotty, can you tell us there's a huge difference in the quality of essential oils? Samantha picked doTERRA because it's the most pure, and we've researched the company. Other essential oils I don't trust. And Scotty, can you talk a little bit about why we chose this, only this brand, and we cannot speak for any other? Yeah, thank you. 
And the reason why I chose doTERRA was because of their quality control mainly. They have a, a, a standard which they created called CPTG, which means Certified Pure Therapeutic Grade. Now, admittedly, doTERRA created this standard themselves. You know, it's because they did not want uh, other oil companies to just say, oh, we have the same thing as doTERRA. They do not. Um, when it comes to quality, uh, doTERRA first checks on how it's harvested, when it's harvested, and from where is it harvested. Then they make sure that the processing is done correctly and that all of the constituents necessary to give a therapeutic benefit to whoever is using the essential oils is there. If it's missing any of the components that make up that therapeutic benefit, the entire batch is discarded. It's not used. Now, they do not test the oils themselves. doTERRA sends it to third-party labs to make sure that the constituents are there to begin with before they even begin to put it into a bottle. So it's really important to know that when doTERRA says that we're using a pure essential oil, they are absolutely putting their entire um, uh, quality on the line. If you ever went into a health food store and you looked at all of the variety of essential oils that are there, all of them will say not for internal use. Now think about that. If it's not for internal use, what else are they putting into it? Obviously there are fillers that are not good for the body. And if you have fillers in the bottle, they're not gonna want you to take it internally. doTERRA will mark all of their bottles um, to say that this oil is actually very good for internal use. This oil is not recommended for internal use. Um, that just shows you where they are in terms of complete safety. Now, when you use an essential mm -hmm. oil, please re recognize that it is incredibly um, uh, powerful. For instance, a single drop of uh, peppermint is the equivalent of 28 cups of peppermint tea, one single drop. So that's why it's so important when you're dealing with your animals to dilute it down. They're small, smaller beings and they have to be uh, treated as such, okay? Someone asked a, a question real quick. I wanna address it real fast, Vicky. What about for horses? Yes, essential oils are great for horses. Use it as you would a human. Dilute it as you would for any adult human. Um, and all of the uh, reference books will tell you how to use essential oils for humans. So I'll use it the same way for horses, okay? Um, yep. That's all I got. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, their reputation is on the line. So doTERRA really makes sure that the quality comes first before it's ever put into a bottle. And I would encourage you to go to YouTube and Google doTERRA. They will show you all the farms where they farm and source. It's, it's very beautiful. It's in every country. It's thousands of family farms. So now we're moving on to Samantha. You're going to talk about Sparkle, your blind yeah. cat. And yeah. then you'll talk about the anointing oils you used for when your animal's ready to cross into the light. Yeah. How do you anoint your animal and prepare them? The reason I wanted to talk about this now, not only is it because of Sparkle, uh, is, is she's 19 and she's blind and deaf and um, she's really, really slowing down. Now, I, uh, she is not ready to go. She's really learning how to utilize her other sensing system. So uh, she gets around. I'm, I'm amazed how well she gets around, but she's slowing down. She sleeps a lot. And uh, so the remedies that Bach flower remedies that I'm using for her is honeysuckle, star of Bethlehem and walnut. A honeysuckle, because there are certain aspects uh, that she can't do and she gets frustrated. So walnut deals with that frustration. And then star of Bethlehem is, uh, helps a little bit with the grieving as she's slowing down. 
Uh, I also use a little anxiety, uh, homeopathic anxiety from homeopath in it. And then I utilize some frankincense uh, with her right now. In her, and I put it a uh, drop in a little water and on my fingers and I put it on her body because there's certain places in her body, on the spine and the back legs, uh, that uh, is in pain when she walks. And so I add that little, partially because I'm using it also for my back. So I know it works. <laughs> and so, and I like the um, spiritual aspect of frankincense. So those are what I'm using with her physical body. Also, I'm using the uh, purity in a spray bottle because many times when I'm talking to a client, uh, I do my meditation and then I let myself be that animal for an hour. And then it's another 45 minutes, sometimes an hour for the readout. So if I do two in a day, many times I can't get in there to change the pee pads and the towels that I set on top of it. And this late afternoon, the sun comes in there and the smell is bad. So when I use either it in a diffuser or mist in there, it kills that pee smell. <laughs> and I love that. Plus, I also use it on my kitchen counter to... Um, you know, clear off any kind of bad stuff in there. In California right now, we're really worried about the coronavirus. So I utilize it a lot. And I also use On Guard. So that's what I'm using with Sparkle at this point. Now, uh, this time of year, I'm not sure why, but more than half of my clients their animals are in the process of slowing down or they've just died or they are going to be assisted with euthanasia. And so when I'm working with an animal to make sure it's appropriate to do that or to make the animal as comfortable or find out what, where the pain is and what the level of discomfort is. Um, then I had a lot of my clients ask me, what can I do to honor the life of my companion animal? And so I started, and I started with me many years ago, doing a ceremony right after each of my guys would leave. Panda, um, I, he had to be assisted. And so I had him in a box with a purple towel and I got flowers and then I got uh, flowers and I put some on his body and my neighbors knew Panda so they were invited and so I had Panda laying on my coffee table with candles and flowers and then I did a prayer and I had a bowl of small bowl of water that I put uh, frankincense myrrh and uh, Scotty was saying to utilize the lavender in a diffuser to help people to help the people then I took a small washcloth and rang it out and then covered panda's paws with it just lightly and then did my prayer it was a very profound experience um, not only for myself but uh, for the people in the room I thanked God for panda's joy for making me want to play, for uh, always making me feel like you are the most special person on the planet when you walk in the room. Always happy to see you. Those kinds of things. And I thanked him for that. And I thank God that I had the privilege of having him in my life. I feel like when we have that kind of love that's unconditional from a being, that it's only right to honor and acknowledge that as they leave. I've had the privilege to being with them in that process. It's a profound process. So I hope that this information will help you or one of your friends that is faced with this. Um, so... <laughs> I wanted to talk also about the coronavirus just kind of quickly. 
Vicky sent me this on guard. I'm going to show you guys this the on guard. Small little spray bottle. I have one in my car and I keep one in the house with me. When I go into a store, I missed me. When I come out, I missed me and I have some sanitizing things. My cats go wild. They want to lick me up. <laughs> <laughs> I have to watch. So I started asking them questions. And I noticed that if you allow the animal to smell, they'll let you know, yes, this is good for me. No, this isn't good for me. So test those kinds of things out. Dilute it way down and allow them to smell it out before you just jump in and utilize them, okay? I also, from a personal basis, use uh, the cleanser for my face and the anti-aging cream. I love this product, and I have their, I carry this everywhere I go. It's their hand, the citrus hand cream. I love it, I love it, I love it. I, <laughs> I, I shouldn't get so enthusiastic, but there are certain times where I'm bold. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you as it is. So I hope that today's you got all the information you need and that you look into this, look into the Bach flowers, do both, um, find an alternative that is uh, a way of utilizing that helps your animals and supports health, it, your health and their health. It was fun. Thanks. <laughs> I got to wipe my eyes, guys. <laughs> So um, we got a question about On Guard in the chat. On yeah. Guard is what Scotty, me, and Samantha are using as a COVID protection. It's antiviral, antibacterial. Yeah. It's non-toxic to animals, plants, and humans. And so Samantha just sort of sprays herself yep. all over I before do. she goes out. Yep. Um, and um, puts it in the diffuser for the animals. Do you have any questions? Does anybody have any questions in the couple minutes remaining? I, I just wanted to add to the on guard that it's based on back in the day when the plague was, how the grave dig, the people who dug up the grave and stole stuff didn't get the plague. And they say that those are the oils that they use, but wow, they well from that is. So I have bottles uh, uh, also. I, I, I love the smell too. <laughs> I do. And my cats seem to love it for some reason. I'm not, I talk about wanting to get it loved up and licked. <laughs> I was like, that's what, that's what triggered me. That's what triggered me to say, let them smell it to see if their body resonates to this or not. And the more that you like something, then you'll utilize it big time, you know? And so uh, I didn't freak out it, when she, you know, it was first April, just, <laughs> I got, got kissed. <laughs> I, yes. I, we have a, yeah, I'm going to say Go I ahead. used it also because I have clients and I don't do Zoom with all my clients. And I ask always if they want some in their hands before, ah. before we sit down, kind of. I don't tell them that to clean you, but you know, <laughs> and most of them, they love the smell. It's really, some of them yeah. are to smell, but most of them actually use it. Yeah. It's a sanitizer yeah. and uh, it's a sanitizer and you can put one drop in your mask I so do. that you're breathing all this beautiful essential oil. Um, Samantha also used a product called Breathe to help her cat breathe mm. who couldn't walk yeah. down the hall. This is Sparkle. This was uh, one night. Um, she came down the hallway. Now she's the one that's blind. And she came down the hallway and she's having a lot of trouble breathing. And I'm thinking, oh, she just wants to be with me. This is it. She's going to make that transition. So I put her on the couch with me. And the breathing was getting more labored and hard. Uh, and so I had, cause I have lung issues. And so I always have my breathe, uh, right close. I'm not kidding. So I took a little tiny bit of that and I put it on the back of her neck because 
what she's done is she's developed her sensory systems so fine-tuned. So I put it on the back of her neck. I knew she would be able to drop right where the shoulder blades are. Uh, maybe, maybe 10, 15 minutes later, she starts breathing easier. And the next thing I know, she's doing unbelievably well. <laughs> and so uh, I've used it with her and she's just, you know, I know. Uh, so I thought, okay, what it was, was another one of those slowdowns and that she needed a little bit of assistance. Another little slowdown there where you think, okay, this is it. That This one's ready to go. I ask and make sure uh, is she supposed to do this on her own or uh, can I assist her? Right now, she isn't ready to me assist her. They haven't told me that if I can uh, at this point. And she's not ready. She eats well, she drinks, and she uses the pot. She just can't see, walk very well, or hear. <laughs> and she's old. So maybe in our next class, Samantha will take you through a protocol of how she treats her animal, show you the diffuser. Yep. We will send a follow-up email with scientific research articles. There's a handful of oils you don't use on pets, even if they're high quality. So, and we'll, we'll send you those links in a follow-up email. Samantha, um, to support her work, because she's always uh, <laughs> served humanity, is now signed up as a distributor with doTERRA. So if you want to buy the oils, please do so. You can do so at wholesale cost from her store. We'll send you her link. And that supports her work. We'd like to continue doing these um, oil classes for free online. And um, we'll tailor them to you. So um, if you want to, I'll put my email in, in the follow-up email. And maybe one of you could have your pet. And if you have the oils on hand or we'll mail you samples, Scotty and Samantha will take you through <laughs> <laughs> what to do and maybe how to send that. And Because if you don't feel safe, your animal won't. Samantha will walk you through the inner process. Scotty will walk you through the outer process. And we'll We'll just play with our animals. How do you feel about that? So these classes are for you. Anything you want to do. Also, um, can I say something, Vicki, real quick yeah. <clears throat> right now regarding this? We are in a time that people are, everybody is stressed out. And, uh, and we need to be able to feel more safe in our bodies we need to experience and bring more joy and, and the feeling that everything's going to be okay. So part of this class is not only to help your animals, uh, but also to help you in order to be one of those lights on the planet that is emanating more safety, emanating more uh, hopefulness, and not getting into the wave of energy that says, uh, critical, 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 this isn't going to work, da, 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 da. So uh, that's what I, I want to help each one of you, uh, not only the other, because my life is animals, but how do we be that light on the planet to say, uh, I'm standing up not only for myself, because I know I feel safe in my body. I can emanate that out in the grocery line. I can emanate that out to my animals. I can emanate that out to an animal that's walking by me. Uh, and then what, are the physical things that supports that in your household. Okay. So uh, I get wound up you guys. <laughs> and so Samantha is starting her two year animal certification program okay. next year and incorporating these sacred high quality oils is part of how she's teaching you to bring, because she, you're not in the same room as her to bring that energy into you to transmit to your animals and to the other animal communicators that you'll be teaching and training. So this is kind of part of the curriculum she's gonna integrate in this two-year program, whatever the best product she finds, both flower essences, essential oils, and then she's testing products and only recommending the ones 
that worked and that are natural. And so she's going to highly curate all her years of research and then pass them to you in two ways, the animal certification program or just free classes like this. So however you choose and you want, um, you know, we're here to serve you in this last phase of Samantha's life. It's time for her to okay. give back. So thank you so much. Scotty or Samantha, last words? Just thanks for showing up, guys, and utilizing animal communication and looking for alternatives that are healthy, not only for you, but your animal companions, be it bird, horse, cats, dog, lizard. <laughs> Okay. Thanks, Scotty, for the information. You're very welcome, Samantha. I want to thank Samantha, too, <clears throat> because I learned so much from her, you know, not only uh, how to use my oils with, with, with the animals, but how to actually communicate with them. Mm -hmm. On my street, we have about 25 ducks that live in a stream right next to my house. And they come here and <laughs> only here because we use essential oils. I swear they're attracted to them. Yeah. Anyway, I, I've learned how to deal with them through <laughs> oil. Thank you very much, Samantha. You're welcome. <laughs> it's love to be in tune with nature, huh? See, that thing on the ad on the paper on the TV member was connect with nature regarding the essential oils. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.